All right, here we go. Hey, everybody, how you doing? It's Coach Bronson here. Today, I have Tara Garrison, um, one of my other fitness coaches in arms in the health and fitness space. Um, I just realized, Tara, as I'm making that quick intro, that I think the last like four people I've interviewed have all been like fitness coaches. Uh, it's not been the doctors and the nutritionists and the influencers. And like, it's been like people who actually have on the ground, in person, work with people to help them, you know, face to face, make these changes. So how long have you been doing that? You, you've been a fitness coach. You've been doing it for just a little bit. Tell us yeah, a little bit about, about your background there and, and what got you in. Sure. Okay. So yeah, uh, coaching clients is my full-time job. I do have a social media presence and sometimes people will be like, do you coach people? I'm like, you think I just do Instagram for a living? Like, no, I like full on <laughs> coach. Like I have a full clientele. I have a, a job, you know, I actually do work with people. Um, so that's my actual job and I do holistic health coaching. So training is where I started you know, went really full mm -hmm. tilt. I love biomechanics. I love all the strength coaching, you know, functional training, hypertrophy, all of that. That's where I started. And then I branched into nutrition and, um, really got obsessed with that. And I think if you get obsessed with nutrition, you kind of start to teeter into the quote unquote biohacking health optimization. Like how do we optimize our environments and the internal environment of our bodies. Um, so what kind of pretty mm -hmm. deep into that and led me into holistic health coaching, you know, how do we use, you know, herbs or supplements or things to help optimize a space or what's actually going on in people's gut microbiome or in their hair mineral. And you know, I do that kind of stuff. I do even DNA analysis. It's kind of interesting to see predispositions and compare them to blood and hair. So I kind of went deep in that route. And then, um, you know, I'm sure any, if, if anybody's ever had like even a personal trainer for say, per se, I mean, pretty soon you'll find out you're like, oh, how's your stress levels? And you're finding out about their divorce and their somebody's infidelity <laughs> and their, you know, their mother-in-law. And like, <laughs> you, yeah. you kind of start to realize like, oh, okay. Like there's some deeper stuff going on here that are leading to a lot of these issues of inflammation or binge eating or all of those. Mm -hmm. So that led me into mindset coaching, not to mention the fact that I had to do a lot of my own work. That's really what led me into mindset coaching. And I was like, wow, some of these fundamental belief systems that we hold about life are, that's the issue. It's not really the yeah, yeah. life. It's the okay. belief, you know? So that's what, yes. that's what I do. Let's dig into that. I, li I like where I like that. So what kind of beliefs were some of the things let's, if you don't mind getting personal that you had to deal with that you see replicated in people that you work with, because mm. we've all been there. Right. And I think anybody mm -hmm. that's coached for, more than a few years they've mm -hmm. had their own life i know i've been through divorce losing my job losing my business like there's been a bunch of stuff i've had to do to go through and kind of come out the other end and i know i can relate to a lot of my clients that way um what's what's that been like for you um i think you know for me where it started i grew up in a in a religion that really just my whole life lens was that through that religion I was born in it, you know, and for me, when I got healthy, when I got, so I was a runner, little background. I was a runner forever. My mom was actually like a mm -hmm. pioneer in women's running. She went to the Olympic trials okay. in 1968. She only didn't, Woo. I think she only didn't make it because they didn't even have her event yet. Cause women's track was so new. Um, yeah. so, you know, she, back then in the sixties, she broke a five minute mile, which was like a huge thing. She was one of the top runners in the country, but now that's like normal for high school runners. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, anyway, I grew up kind of, you know, I don't, none of us had gyms. I was born in 1982. I didn't have a, we, nobody went to the gym. There was a few families that went to the yeah. YMCA, but you know, so I grew up running, which was a little entry point, but I was overweight my whole life. I, you know, and so for me, when I got into weightlifting and changing my nutrition, it led to, what I feel like was like a personal awakening. It wasn't just like, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm like stronger physically. So I feel more confident. It was like my brain started operating differently and I knew it. And I think it was from the inc increase in protein and getting more stabilized mm -hmm. dopamine levels, which will allow you to be more decisive. Um, think a little more from a bird's eye point of view. I could tell that yeah. was happening in my life. Uh, be more, open, make new neural pathways through all the strength training, drop an in inflammation. So I went from like 
pushing 40% body fat to went full tilt, like kind of a little too obsessed, 11% body fat bodybuilder mode. You know what I mean? What? So that was a pretty how, huge, that's like, a big change. how long did that take to go from, from one it, to the other? About a, about a year and a half. Okay. Um, it was eight months of just like, I, I was like, I'm like a bodybuilder now. Focused, right? Super yeah. Focused. Super, super obsessed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like super yeah. focused. Right. And about eight months of just the lifting being obsessed, that was definitely not enough. And it wasn't until I changed my nutrition drastically mm -hmm. that that's when everything started to move. Um, but wait, wait, hold on a second. You mean fitness and nutrition together is more effective than one by themselves. I remember this is a new concept. I'm just, I'm just learning about. Hold on a second. <laughs> I, just to clarify, just to draw the picture for people. I mean, I'm talking. I never missed a day in the gym. I'm on bodybuilding.com forums. I'm like super geeking out on training. Right? I was hardcore. Eight months into that journey, I was at a family reunion. And I saw a picture of myself. I didn't look different at all of <laughs> wow and that was when i was like dude i know there's muscle in here i know like I, I if i'm gonna live this lifestyle i gotta i gotta get the nutrition you know because most people it's like yeah i'm i'm eating well it's like you know if you've had a massive nutrition change or not and that's when everything went boop. Sure. but you know um for me it was like when i when my brain started operating differently i finally had like the inner mm -hmm. strength to be like no actually I have some questions and I'm going to get answers. So I had to get out of this religion. I lost everyone I knew that then paved the way for me to get out of a marriage I needed yeah. to get out of. And so I had to do when you leave a religion that has like completely become the lens, like your whole life, it's been the lens that you saw life through. When you walk I'm, away I'm from right that, it's like, yeah, yep. it's like you have to decide. It's like a blank slate almost. It's actually more than a blank slate because you feel like you have to unwire all of these you know, judgment yes. for me anyway, all these patterns that weren't serving me anymore and choose new ones, that's yep. going to lead you on a mindset journey. <laughs> so that's kind of where it all started for yeah, me. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I don't know how extreme you're dealing, you're talking with. I grew up in a very, very religious family. And when, you know, I left home for the first time, joined the army, got out into the real world, it was like, what is going on? <laughs> I'd lived in this kind of a bubble for so long and having to relearn how to look at the world, how to interface with people, how to communicate with people who didn't know have the same experiences that I had never really been exposed to a lot of people that didn't have the same experience of growing up that I had. Uh, so I exactly, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's like relearning how to look at the world and everything. So yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. so it's a, mm -hmm. it's an interesting experience. Oh yeah. <laughs> the whole, my whole life is a lie thing. It's like a joke, but I was like, no, really though. Like, Oh my gosh, I don't know how, what I think about Maybe anything anymore, but you know, and, and then, okay. You asked about like common patterns. Like, I mean, one was just mm -hmm. like, I wasn't living life on my terms completely. in that old program, I was in this, this is how I should be. And this is what makes people like me. And this is how you're supposed to, it was this very, like, this is how are you supposed to do it? What's the right way? You know, it's very in that way of black, white, good, bad. And so, um, that I see a lot in people. I'm sure you do too. Yeah. It's just like, just tell me the right way to do it. And it's like, well, <laughs> that would be a little disrespectful. I can give you um, some professional opinions or, you know, I can, but like, I feel like my job is to, yes, give people good information, but then turn them back inside themselves. And so now in this day and age, we have like so many different paths, right? It's like some person is saying this is the right way. And then the other person saying that is the totally wrong way. And this is the right way. And so, at that point, you know, it's like we can give people information, but I'm always trying to encourage people to like notice the feedback coming from them own their themselves, right? It's like, well, how did you feel yeah. when you tried that? How what what results did you actually get from that? Does it sound good in theory cuz Dr. so and so right. says that that is the best way? Well, how was it for you? You know, and did you try it for a sustained amount of time enough to really feel it out and it wasn't a go for you? Okay then honor that, you know? Um, yeah. and then just not believing in oneself. We've had a lot of conditioning. You grew up religious too. Right. So like, mm -hmm. I feel like there is a lot of not enoughness, like not never good enough dangling carrot syndrome, you know, like, um, try, try, try as hard as you can. And you're still not ever going to be good enough that I think exhaust people. 
I see that yeah. constantly. Right. And so again, once again, like it's a constant process of like honoring yourself. What do you want? What do you want your life to look like? What do you, you know, what feels good to you? What is working for you? You know? So, yeah. 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 I, I wonder how much of that is a people's is a people's people's is, is the disbelief that things are even possible. Yeah. There's a lot of people that I, that I talk to who come to me with problems and you're like, yeah, that's, that's no, yeah, that's, that should be an easy fix. Not a big deal. And they look at you with this look of like disbelief. Like, what do you mean that should be an easy fix? It, fix. It's this huge, big giant mountain in front of me. And it's like, no, it's really just this. And they, it, and it just blows people away when they make one little small change. And then all of a sudden this giant mountain that they had in front of them disappears. And it's really just because of one little way that they were thinking about something or one habit that they changed or one small decision that they make along the path. And it's like, it really wasn't that big of a deal, but you can't go in as a coach and say, that's no big deal. It's easy. Mm -hmm. Just do this, you know, like, cause then that's kind of disrespectful to their feelings. So you have to acknowledge the person's feelings, but try to walk them. I like how you said, turn them in on themselves, walk them back to what's the real issue here. And what are you really trying to do? Because that's always what it comes back to is what is that individual person trying to do, regardless of everything else? Yeah. And you hit the nail on the head as like a question. Um, I had a, a mindset coach, uh, mentor, I guess I'd say that he would always say the quality of a, co a coach is the quality of the questions that they ask. And I think that's a, you know, you automatically went into that as like, what do you want to do? What, where do you want to go? And so I think like if somebody, you know, let's say so you have a financial coach and they're like, well, Bronson, just uh, get five investors and build a, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like you might be like, uh, if you've never done that before, right? Like, it's like, I, how do I get right. investors? I don't know. That doesn't seem possible. Like, whoa, what if, <laughs> what if I don't like having investors and blah, 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 right. But somebody else who's done that before is like, oh my God, you just talk to some people and you just get the shit together and you go, you know, but f you know, that's the same way, um, for, you know, health coaching, maybe, it's, especially if somebody has been overweight their whole life, you know, and you're like, trying to say, just tell them what to do. I think I find it much more powerful if we can ask them like, you know, so what's going wrong? What do you feel like is going wrong here? Like, what do you, and, and why do you think that keeps happening? And you just keep asking questions. And when they can pull those out themselves, I find it a much more effective way to help somebody get there than versus, Oh, well, you just need to stop eating at night. Right. <laughs> but if I can say, right. well, you know, why do you think you keep eating at night? Oh man. Cause I don't put my kids to bed till like 10 o'clock. And then I, okay. So what do you, what do you, you know, do you, what do you think you should do? What, how do you want to manage that? How do you want to play that when they can get there? You know, I think that a lot of what I've learned is my most effective coaching uh, conversations are when I'm asking a lot of questions <laughs> and really a good lot questions. of questions. Yeah. yeah. yeah a lot of questions. <laughs> Making them realize, you know, because the, the point of it, and we're giving away coaching secrets for those of you listening, <laughs> the point of asking the questions is what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the person that we're talking to, we're trying to get them to a point where they realize the decision they have to make on their yeah. own. Right. The decision I have to make is, do I want to stay up with my kids at till 830 and put them to bed at 830? Or do I want to spend time journaling? Right. 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 Whatever that, that thing it is that they're struggling right. because when when someone comes to me with stress because of something that's bothering them or they have been able to be consistent at or whatever, usually it's because the cho choices they're making up to that point have prevented that from happening. So it's like, OK, what is the decision? What are the decisions you made for the, the three hours before that point in time that got you to where you are, where now you have this crisis of stress of making a determination this or this because I want to do both. Mm -hmm. And that's that's kind of that. Well, you got to do, you know, what's the path to the decisions you made and what's more important to you? And I think understanding and being OK with prioritizing your decisions, regardless of what they are, is where people get stuck. Right. You know, um, a great way to illustrate that is so I do I have all my clients together and like uh, we do two. My, they're my one-on-one -on -one clients, but I put them in a group and we do two Zoom calls a week together. And I used to call Friday mm -hmm. accountability calls, okay? And so I used to yeah. ask them, what's one thing you want to be held accountable for this week? 
And I kept sitting with that and I was like, I don't like the energy of this. I know everybody, I mean, everybody and their dog, how many, how many times have you heard in your career, Bronson? I just need somebody to hold me accountable. Like that's what people say. I'm, I'm, why are you hiring yep. me? Because I need yep. you to hold me accountable. That's the kind of the program that's out there. And I was just like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Something about this is bothering me because when they would, the next week they would report on how that thing went, right? That one thing that they want to be right. held accountable for. And even as much as I would say like, Hey, it's okay. Just like you were saying, like, if you need to change this, you make a game time decision of like, I thought that sounded good in the moment, but that doesn't make any sense because I'm sick. So I'm not going to like run a mile every day this week, you know, like, <laughs> instead of having shame about it, it's being good with the decisions that you're making, you know, with yourself. It's still, I still, when they would come back to report on it, they'd be like, well, yeah, I sucked. I didn't do it, but it was this kind of shamey energy. So I eventually changed it. I changed it to what do you want to do this week? That's it. Same exact process. Yep. Just yep. what's one thing you want to do this week? Guess what went sky high? The accountability compliance, right? Because instead of saying, oh man, I just told all those people that I was going to do that. Now it's this pressured, like almost like I have homework, this pressure thing. It's just this yep proclamation yep. of this is what I want to do. And if I decide I don't want to do it, then I just, that the energy shifted completely. So just sharing yeah. that too, I, it, it totally is, it's that. like being in alignment with yourself with the choices that you're making. That's, that's where it's at. Yeah. You know, I talked, I talk about accountability and I totally get that energy because it has that connotation of I'm going to get in trouble if I don't do this. <laughs> yeah. And I try to talk about accountability from the, an accountability partner, a coach, like when I'm trying to hold somebody accountable, I try to, to explain to them, I, I can't, you can't get in trouble with me. I'm not your boss. I'm not your parent. You are a grown adult, right? Your accountability when people work with me is I'm going to help you acknowledge the decision you made and why you made it. Right. That's exactly. my job as an accountability partner. Exactly. I, I can't get you in trouble. I'm not the, the enforcement authority for it, whatever. Um, but my job is to help, again, ask those questions and make sure that you're aware of the decision, that you didn't just go exactly. through the day, go through the week, and it happened without you being conscious of it. Because awareness is the key to progress. You can't make changes if you don't practice becoming aware of what's happening in the decision you're making. Exactly. That's why I have meditation as part of, that's a, I'm not, uh, there's few things that I'm not really loose on in my coaching and meditation is one of them. And it's like, no, we're going to do it because mm. it, to me, it's just, it creates the ability to get out of the reactive mind and become this observer of yourself. Right. It's like, Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Like I got really triggered by that. Oh, interesting. Like my husband said that and I started drinking. What is that? Right. It kind of pulls you into <laughs> that space, you know? So yes, it is extremely right. important. It's just, we're, I always tell my clients, I'm like, I'm not like your, I'm not like your boss or your teacher. I'm your servant. You hired me, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm just here to, yeah. to, to serve you and help you become more aware of all the things happening in your life. And you have the answers inside of you. I have some cool information that you might not have known. And that's why you hired part of the reason you hired me, but like, it's still always, it's in this honoring process of like checking in with them on how things are going. Not like, okay, you little peon, you better do what I say kind of vibe. <laughs> yeah. You got, you got me, you got me thinking, I'm wondering like if I had to describe what a coach is and what people should look for in a coach, I'm thinking a facilitator, Someone who provides information. Um, what are some other words that you could think of? I think like respect, respect and communication, mm -hmm. you know, like I've hired a lot of coaches before and it's, yeah. you know, it's, I'd say overall, it's always a good experience, but there are different vibes. Right. And that's fine. You know, there's different strokes for different folks, but some of them are this very authoritative, like you mm -hmm. do what I say, you know, like kind of. And a lot of people want that and I get that and, and it works. Yeah. I can, I can play in that arena, you know? Um, I think even with that kind of energy, it could still work as long as there is like respect and commu honest communication. I find that, um, in that energy though, sometimes it is people get scared and they lie because they like want to save face. They want to please. I don't yeah. ever want to. Um, I tell, I'm sure. There's, I'm a, like, there's I a level of defensiveness. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I don't, 
I, I, whatever you, I've heard it all. I mean, I have heard that, that my clients have been through some rough patches. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. Yep. You're cheating on your wife or you're cheating on your husband, or you just, you know, went out of the country and did a bunch of drugs. Okay. You know, like there's nothing that really surprises me all sorts of childhood trauma. I'm just like, yeah. yep, that stuff happens. You know, I understand and we can work through this, but if you don't feel safe with your coach to just be real with them, I think that to me, that's a, that's really important is that my clients feel safe enough to be honest with me so that we can work through things together that they can say, Hey, this triggered mm -hmm. me. And I, I haven't drank in a long time, but I drank a whole bunch after that. And it's like, Oh right. man, okay. Thanks for telling me that. Like, let's, let's work through it. What do you think happened there? You know, and kind of, so I'd say mm -hmm. safety, mm -hmm. honesty, communication, trust, respect. And my clients know that I respect them. I think that's important. Yeah. I do. They're yeah. amazing people, you know? And so this is just one arena of their life that I'm helping them with. But like, I also see them and, and honor and respect them as amazing human beings, you know? So mm -hmm. I think that's important, for, at least for me. I, I can't speak for all coaches. Everybody has their sure. own vibe. But I, as me, for me as a <laughs> coach, that's got their important. own thing. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> How hard is it? We kind of got, we're kind of talking way off of what I thought we were going to talk about, but we're kind of talking about the experience of being a coach. So I kind of like this. Um, how hard is it for you to separate yourself from your desire to see your client succeed and their desire to do the work? Mm, I've done a lot of deep work on this a lot. Like um, I work with a woman yeah. who's kind of like, it's like therapy and I shouldn't say better. It's like, it's deeper for me than therapy. And she, it's like a subconscious mind work. And we dive, I've done work with her on this kind of stuff. Yeah. Right? right. Because there is like, it's a delicate balance as a coach. Cause you're like, well, yeah, like you paid me to get, help you get to where you want to go. And so I think when you're a new coach, there's almost like this desperation of like, you have, I, it's, it's like, you know, kind of personal, like if things aren't working, it's my fault. I must be not saying the right thing or blah. And I used to pressure the crap out of myself on that. Yeah. And I, I still, um, definitely hold myself to a certain level of, um, I don't know. It's more in my heart now. It's like, okay, this is, how do I meet her where she's at a little better, you know? And so I do mm -hmm. definitely like hold my, that that's my job, you know, <laughs> is right. to help right. meet people where they're at. And um, I don't, if somebody isn't showing up, there's nothing I can do about that. I will do my part. I'll do much as I, you know, remind them, Hey, what's going on? Like, you know, like I'll do as much as I can, but there is a certain amount of release work. That's just healthy boundaries that you have to do as a coach. Cause sometimes, yeah, sometimes people hire coaches and they don't show up. And usually I'll, you know, we have patience with that and we'll be like, okay, yeah, just when you're right. ready, let's get going again. And then if it just keeps happening, it just, to me, it's respectful to just be like, it's a, totally get it. You know, like I, when somebody's not ready, you can't force it. So there is some yeah. releasing. I'm sure you, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You gotta, I mean, it's very hard. I think uh, there's a level of awareness that most people don't have when it comes to how invested we are in their success. Mm -hmm. And it's not financial. I, I don't know anybody who gets into coaching. No, I haven't met anybody who, who's gotten into coaching because they think they're going to make millions of dollars. Doing it. <laughs> yeah. We all started as part-time right. personal right. trainers at a box gym, making yeah. like $8 an hour. <laughs> right. It's, it's not something that you do because you think you're, it's, it's, it's not about the money. It's not about the prestige. Um, very, I mean, you think very few people in sports get to the NFL or get to the NBA. It's even less of a percentage of people that are in fitness that become famous trainers. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, the level of notoriety you get as a trainer is, I mean, you, it, it's, it's not there. So we're not doing this because of, we want to be famous or rich. We're doing this because we have a passion many times because it's something we've experienced ourselves and we want to help other people have the same experience because that's where we get satisfaction, contentment, and a feeling of fulfillment is seeing other people succeed. So it goes way deeper than just you paid me, so I have to help you. Um, it's a lot deeper than that. Yeah. And it's hard to separate from that sometimes. Yes, because it's like when you have true empathy because you've been in those places where you're not healthy, you're not thriving, you understand what, what that feels like. And then you're now living in this other reality. I mean, it's kind of like 
watching somebody drown in front of you when you just got out of the water right. on the boat. It's like, no, like, you know, so it is, we are very invested in our clients, you know, like, yeah. it's like, I will, if necessary, spend hours in research on one client when it, when the time comes, like if there's something going on, I'm like, yep. what is this with the liver and her gut? Like, holy. And you know, I, we, cause it matters, well, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. That one question pops up and you were that you weren't prepared for. And you're like, <laughs> right. Uh, I, I'll have to get back to you on that. And the next four hours is you just digging around trying to figure out something. Yeah. Yeah. hundred mm -hmm, percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I definitely say I, so, you don't become a coach unless I'd say for most of us, it was from our own personal understanding of how much better you can feel and wanting to help yeah. others do the same. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. When did you start? So you were in, you were a runner, you lost, you got into strength and the strength training, you lost a lot of body fat, you changed your physique. Did you get into coaching personal training right then? Or is that something that happened? later yeah what's, the, yes. what's your journey as a coach yeah so um my that journey happened in 2015 so in 2016 i went ham hey, and, and started coaching you know so I, I definitely haven't been coaching as long as you bronson um but mm. it, for me it was you know i started on that typical path of getting my nasm and becoming a, a personal yeah. trainer at the box gym and then getting, you know, became, I don't know if you know, Mike Boyle certified functional strength coach. And then I just kept going ham. I went out to MI mm -hmm. 40 and, um, Ben Pikulski's place. And then I did, um, Charles Poliquin's metabolic analytics and muscle nerds. And I just started going crazy, you know, some nutrition certifications. And I, I, I'm very like, in case you haven't noticed, it's kind of the same as my, I, once I get, um, interested in something. It's just like yeah. I'm a little bit insatiable, especially when I knew that I was going to uh, be starting to help other people. It's like, I mean, obviously we refer, I refer out all the time. I'm like, I don't know. That's out of inside of my scope. Like go to yeah. a therapist or go to a naturopath or, you know, um, but it's, it's just so fun to be able to have a lot of tools in your tool belt <laughs> to be able to help people. So it that's, is, absolutely. that's, that's kind of how that journey went. Yeah. Okay. So you, so you did all of that stuff and you went from being a fitness trainer to more of a health coach, nutritionist. And now you're doing kind of bringing it all together, right? This is the, this is a common progression. I see most, but this is kind of where I'm, I've headed. This is where Natalie's gone. This is where, I don't know if you know, Casey Ruff, Casey's kind of moved in that direction. Every coach I've ever talked to has a progression where they start in one area and we all eventually end up in mindset, lifestyle, habit change, behavior change, because that's where to. it all begins. We, if we could to. start there. That'd be great. But I think we it makes us better in that phase once we've gone through the other stuff, because now we know how to apply the concepts of, of behavior change to a lifestyle as opposed to just having everything conceptual, but not knowing any of the other stuff works. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It kind of, it, it takes time to deep dive into each arena, you know, and, um, and I'm always still deep diving. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I, I always say like, I don't really know how you can be a health coach in some arena, like nutrition or training or both without like kind of just naturally becoming a mindset coach or lifestyle or behavior change. Cause it's, you just realize like you can't, that is so important. It's just, I mean, there's the few people out there that are like, okay, here's your training plan and your nutrition plan. And they're just like, got it. And it's just this straight trajectory up. <laughs> but, yeah. Isn't that how it used to be though? I mean, think about this. Think about back in the nineties, right? Everything was meal plans and exercise plans. And that's all you hired a coach and that's what you got. And if you didn't do it, it was your fault. Right. You know, I mean, that's, I, that's what I remember. And that's what most people like still want. And, and I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I mean, I'm giving you that. I do. <laughs> I do give them that, but I'm like, yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, when this starts, when you start, you know, going through the fast food thing on, on Saturday, or you're driving around to all your kids games all day long and oopsie, you forgot to make that salmon with asparagus that I had in your meal plan. Then you're going to see why we do this other stuff. <laughs> but exactly, <laughs> exactly. I wish there was a way. And, and that's the stuff that nobody wants. This has always been my challenge as a coach is I'm like, I know what you need. 
and I know what you want, and I know that there's no path in between that you that makes sense to you. So I have to sell you what you want, and then when you get in, I'm going to secretly give you what you need, yep, yep, and yep, you're going to yep, be like, wait yep. a second, what's going on here? But that's kind of what we have have to. Do, I right? yeah, I was just listening to. Uh, do you know Drew Manning? Do you know Drew? It's true. Yeah, I was listening to Drew yeah. and Heidi Powell. Well, I, I, I know who he is. Okay, I, I haven't, I haven't met him yet, but yeah. Okay, uh, I was listening to him and Heidi Powell on a live the other day, and she said the same exact thing. She's like, "You got to give them. I give them what they think they want. I do get, and I'm. I've always said the same yeah. thing. I was like, I say that too. And you say it. It's like, here you go. <laughs> Here's your meal plan. And they're like. And sometimes I'll be like, you can track your own food. They're like, oh no, I just want a meal plan. I'm like, okay, there you go. There's your, you know, exact foods. It's you just know the whole time you're just like, I feel like I have in the beginning that people will get in an uproar if they don't get those things that they think the way they think they need to be coached. So I just give yeah. it to them. I'm like, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, make sure you book a call with me next week <laughs> because <laughs> we're gonna need to talk. Yeah. So yeah, how'd that, how that meal plan work out for you? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Did you eat that every single meal? Every single yeah, okay. <laughs> they mm -hmm. might for a week or two. And then it's so sad because like we know what's gonna happen because we do this day in and day out. It's like they they start to beat themselves up like crazy. And it's like, no, listen, it's just that doesn't work <laughs> to think. Yeah. I mean, unless you the only time I ever see that work is when somebody's doing like a bodybuilding competition. Right. Like they're willing to go to these extreme things where they're going to a family thing and they're like, I got to pack my Tupperwares and, you know, yeah. but. <laughs> well, and that's a, that's a really good point because the reason it works in that situation is because they did this first. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. They set the expectation. They created the, the, the goal and the, the, deter, the commitment to control their environment and do what they needed to do because they have that, that goal. Mm -hmm. Now that's not a long-term goal. That's a short-term goal, but it's an example of once you set their, your mind to doing something, then you're going to do it. Exactly. And that's part of that process. The mind in all of the cases, the mind has to come before the action really sticks. Yeah. I also think that some, sometimes I'm like, those coaches are really smart because the stakes are so high because that person knows that they're going to be on a freaking stage and a thong yeah. in a couple months that kind of like drives <laughs> the behavior change pretty quick. <laughs> Just a little bit. The guys too, right? The guys are pretty much in thongs these days too, right? Yeah. Wow. Okay. We should so do that with got, our got clients, Bronson. We yeah, should do that with our clients. <laughs> You're going to yeah, have to right? be on Say, the stage okay. in a thong. That's how it works this when you work with me. This is now part of the program. Thong. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that would not. Because here's the thing. If we did that, then we'd have to do it too. At least to start, right? And that's, I'm definitely not doing that. That was the worst yeah. part when I did my little bikini experiment, uh, in 2021 yeah. was, I was like, I am not the kind of chick that likes to like walk on a stage in high heels with my butt showing. Like I am way <laughs> too shy and like tomboyish for this. It was, I was, my heart was beating out of my chest. That was scary. Yeah. <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. Natalie <laughs> keeps trying to get me. She's like, you're going to get on stage one of these days. And I'm like, I'm not getting on stage. I will watch from the sidelines and cheer people on all day long, but I'm not, I just, I can't, I don't know. There's something about it. I just, it's, it's weird because when I see competitions, I see the guys on stage and then for the next week I'm comparing myself and like, Ooh, what if I did that? Like, Ooh, I could do this. Ooh, I could do that. And then like, what am I doing? I'm not getting on stage. Why am I even thinking about what, it, what I would look like? So it's, it's, it's weird. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> question for you. Right now, what does your fitness routine look like and how has it changed over the years? Mm. Um, I'm much more intuitive with my body. That's how it's changed, but I'll, I'll get into, um, so I do, what I do personally is I have like, it, I'm still kind of like bodybuilder ish at heart. Right. I do like, like functional mm -hmm. training and jumping on boxes. I mean, all I ever see you doing mean, is curls on Instagram. <laughs> I only do curl. <laughs> um, okay. So I, this is how I frame just your basic body part split, right? So Monday's legs, Tuesday, I do back and biceps, Wednesday's glutes and abs. Um, 
Thurs and sometimes I'll throw chest in there. I'm a little lazy on chest though. I admit, uh, Thursday shoulders and triceps Friday is like my fun day. So that's my functional, like, you know, kind of, it's like, it's not really high intensity interval training. Cause as you know, like most people don't even ever get to, but it's, it's like a functional circuit. So that's really fun for me. It's like sprints, ladders, uh, th- slamming balls, wall balls, you know, battle ropes, jump rope. Like I love that kind of stuff, but I, um, I keep that kind of minimal on Fridays every once in a while I'll do an, another day during the week, but mm-hmm. not often. And then Saturdays, um, Saturdays and Sundays, I leave kind of open. Sometimes I just like to go hiking with my kids or just, you know, be outdoors, do something like that. If I do, I go to the gym. I'll usually just walk or do something like really light. I do like to keep that morning time set for movement. So let's say it's a Tuesday and I'm supposed to do back and biceps and my body just feels like under recovered. I'll just walk. I just walk and I like work from my phone. I walk uphill on the treadmill. So that's what I mean by more. I'm way I'm really listening to and honoring my body. My recovery is a little higher. My recovery is pretty high. Like I always feel good, you know, but every once in a while I got wax sleep or maybe I just hit my nervous system a little too hard the day before. So I'll just walk anytime I feel like it, where I feel Mm -hmm. like I need more recovery and that's it. Okay. (laughs) What did you do? What kind of, you're still doing the same kind of stuff you used to do or has that changed as well? Oh no. I mean, some, some of the stuff is basics, right? Like sometimes, you know, I'm still going to do like some lat rows and some bent over rows and some Bulgarian split squats and squats and deadlifts. Like there's those basics that, yeah, of course I'm going to do those, but I do also like to introduce new things, right? Cause mm-hmm. I just get bored if I don't. So, you know, I, not too new. I'm not like one of the, you know, like making up crazy weird stuff. I just mean like trying out animal clothes and all that other kind of stuff. Yeah. Although, I mean, that looks really cool, you know, like, but I just, I'm a little more, um, I guess I'm a little more focused on hypertrophy strength. Um, and then like functional, like Mm -hmm. sprint type stuff. So yeah, I, because of that, what I mean by doing something different might be like, okay, I'm going to do staggered stance <laughs> RDLs versus Woo, a single leg RDL. It up, it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a little old school. Getting wife. crazy, Terry. You're getting crazy. <laughs> I haven't done these in a minute. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, that's, that's very similar. I do. I think probably the craziest stuff I, I'm at doing at this point is stuff just like, like, uh, let's do some kettlebell windmills and Turkish get ups, things like that. Right. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. I definitely have found that, you know, I, I preach it. And part of the, part of the reason I preach it is because it's what's working for me is the basics are always better than anything else. The stick with the basics, stick with the fundamentals. Um, and you don't need to get crazy. I see a lot of these people. There's so many people out there who have these huge, you know, followings on social media who are doing, like I said, animal flow and all these crazy kettlebell flow and this flow, this flow thing is a big thing right now, you know, and all these different crazy things. And it's like, guys, you're trying to learn how to do this primal movement. You can't even squat right now. It's hard for you to even get out of your chair. Like that's the last thing you need to be worried about. Like let's get some basic functional movements going on so you can live your life every day instead of trying to learn how to walk around the, your living room like a gorilla, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do like to also include yoga um, in mm-hmm. my clients' training plans and mine, like yeah. once a week. Uh, Sundays are a great day for that because I just find that like a restorative yoga where you're just kind of getting in those deep, you know, stretches and you got to kind of find a good instructor. I'm a little picky on that, I guess, as a, <laughs> <laughs> as a coach. So, but yeah, that, I mean, for me, that's what to help just help with mobility as long as you can hold that in a sure. strengthened position, you know, you're not mm-hmm. just getting like <laughs> hyper mobile. Um, I think yoga is a really smart thing to add for us, you know, okay. strength training okay. type peeps just to keep things moving correctly. What is your, your favorite exercise? You know, I was just thinking the other day, I was like, I sure do a lot of walking lunges. <laughs> and, ter- and when you say favorite, I really okay. I mean, do you just mean pure enjoyment, or do you mean like I'm like this is the one, uh, the one <laughs> pure enjoyment? Like, like if you if you when you get to the gym, you know how there's those days where you get to the gym, you're like, I got to do legs today, and this is what my program says, but I really don't feel like doing that. I'm gonna do this instead. Yeah. Like, what no, is that one that pops up more frequently than your programming says it should? 
Yeah, if I had to pick one, it, and probably anybody who goes to my gym will be like, oh, yeah, she always knowing those things. It would probably be walking lunges. And I, <laughs> because I like to, so what I like to do, Bronson, you got to try this. Okay. Maybe you've done this before, but nice. this is like one of the hardest yeah. leg sets I ever do. I'll do like decently heavy, like maybe I'll have like 30s in each hand, okay. dumbbells, and I'll yeah. do 10 walking lunges to 10 split squats. 10 more walking lunges to 10 split squats on the other leg. So you're pretty dead by then. And then you drop the weight and you repeat that body weight. That is one of the hardest things. You're ever. crazy. It's so intense. That's 40. That's, that's 40 reps per leg. Yeah. Yeah. That no. is super. That's called uh swear words come out of your mouth. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> okay. Now, now I have to go try it. <laughs> Jeez. Tag me, tag me. I want to see it. You know, um, uh, Brandon, uh, he's a keto guy, carnivore guy. What's his name? Brandon from Virginia. Uh, you know um, I can't think of his last name. I know. I mean, I, I can't remember his Instagram handle, but anyway, yeah, yeah, he yeah. came out to Utah one time and I had him doing that and it was really funny. He was like falling to the floor. That's it hilarious. is really. It's intense. funny. I just, Nat just showed me a video of a bunch of guys trying their girlfriend's lower body workout. <laughs> It was hilarious. All the dudes were done. They're like, well, you women are insane. <laughs> well, it is kind of the Biggest joke. Thing. It's like, what are you do working today? Legs. What are you working today? Glutes. What are you yeah. working today? Legs. <laughs> right? It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Okay. So that's your favorite lunges. What's your least favorite? Mm. I would probably have to say um, I do them because they're effective, but bent over rows, like on the bench, like heavy, heavy, like I'll really? do like 65s or something. Okay. Wow, yeah. They're just so they're like the, they're like the Bulgarian split squats of back work. They're just so unenjoyable, but they're so freaking effective. So I do them I, anyway. I agree. <laughs> they are. I would much rather do a T bar or a, you know, a, a v, v handle row or something, but yeah. Yeah, they're yeah, they're intense, definitely... and the Bulgarians There's something about awesome. having just oh god oh yeah. <laughs> Ugh. absolutely that is I think that's probably a universal between Bulgarian split squats and burpees. I think those two are like the universal nobody likes them. Although I, I personally love, I love burpees, so that's that's I'm just crazy that way. I love burpees. I will they're have like, to try. I don't think I've done a burpee in years. I kind of forgot about burpees, so I'll, I'll really? try them. <laughs> all right i'll tell you what i'll challenge you to do 100 burpees and i'll do these or 40 burpees or whatever and i'll do these lunges deal oh, <laughs> i'm not looking forward to this what am i doing to myself <laughs> fantastic all right so real quick let's let's just um wrap this up and just give people a like a, a window into what they can expect if they're working with you and what it is you try to get people to do in your program as a coach? Um, okay. Yeah. For me, mindset is like huge. So it's kind of funny mm -hmm. for me because like TikTok is like my biggest platform now. And I've noticed really? all, okay. all, yeah, by far, like um, I've got like over 250,000 people follow me on TikTok That's now. Awesome. It's insane. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what people only really want on TikTok is workouts. So it's kind of hilarious because I'm like, this is like such a small piece of what I do for a right. living. Like it's like, it, I mean, when you really work with me, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, you're doing your training. Okay. Everything going there. Okay, cool. It's like, <laughs> I mean, that is a big part of what they're doing on their own, but um, sure. I would say, so also I do Christian Thibodeau's neurotyping. That's one of the certifications okay. I have. I don't know if you know Christian. Um, mm -hmm. You should get to know him. He's so cool. Like I can connect you guys. But um, so I do I do that, right? I do training by neurotype and a, a bunch of other things, circles. And then, of course, nutrition. And uh, like you, like I do keto um, for some people if they need it and then other mm -hmm. people not. Um, I do use carnivore sometimes. Um, so just kind of whatever's needed. And then um, what I mean by mind, I mean – I think I won't coach people unless they're willing to do the mindset end of things with me. Cause I used to offer that, you know, people were like, can I just do the health coaching? And it was just like, I'm like, you don't even understand how like lame this is compared to the people doing the life coaching thing with me. Like, this is like, so like, yeah, 
it's shallow. It was so surfacey, you know, it's like, yeah. So I don't want it. I just don't want to do that anymore. I'd rather like go into the life changing stuff. So we, um, it's, there's a personal development program in my coaching that they okay. do as part of a morning routine with meditation and gratitude is like a little course. And like, we awesome. get deep into stuff and, um, and then, yeah, a group calls, we have a mindset call every Monday and then we do have that wants and wins, which are win yeah. also on Fridays. And then, um, yeah, I do one-on-one -on -one calls with my clients too. So it's a lot of like deep work. I have four areas in my coaching that we go into in the mindset realm. And that's your personal, physical, professional, and people, which is like relationships. So on my call, I'll just kind of check in with them. I'm like, what's going on in the people arena? And they're like, oh my God, my gotcha. sister-in-law, you know, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, you know, so we do, it is like full on life coaching, right? That we yeah. do. Yeah. Um, but then the training and health stuff too. And then I do lab testing, like I said, blood DNA, mm -hmm. air, mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff. And I'm sure like most, like you said, most of us coaches that are like really passionate about health optimization in one way, shape or form, we kind of all teeter into these arenas of like, let's go deeper here. Let's go deeper here. So right. that's, that's how yeah. I do it. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, it's been fantastic talking to Tara. Every time we get together again, I feel like having been in the, in the mud, in the ground, on the ground, working with people makes a difference when you kind of talk about things with people you kind of have the same experiences so mm -hmm. it's always fun to talk to other coaches what's really uh is. where do other where can people find you and get in touch with you and follow you and add to your millions of tiktok viewers <laughs> there's not millions the people who think i'm just they the personal trainer personal i feel like i'm playing around <laughs> like i'm personal trainer tara today you know um yeah it's just coach tara garrison on everything t-a-r-a mm -hmm. so tiktok instagram and facebook are probably the most common places people find me. And then my website is just taragarrison.com. And I do have a podcast. It's called the Inside Out Health, Inside Out Health Podcast. And Bronson has been on it. Yep. And I just have to say, like, I so appreciate talking to you too, because it's like, there's a different, there's a different energy. Of, I don't know how to say this. Like when you talk to like working professionals that are just kind of doing their job every day versus mm -hmm. like what a lot of people get on social media is kind of this like persuasive dogmatic, like uh, this is how it is like theory stuff. And mm -hmm. you know, some of it's really interesting and cool, but like, there's just a different energy when you talk to people who are like practicing every single day. And I, it's, right. it's so nice. Like Danny Vega is like that too, talking to him mm -hmm. or, you know, just all the, the day to day coaches that are in there doing their jobs. So yeah, it's, it's definitely refreshing to have a conversation <laughs> about real topics and real things and not everything's just pious. Right. This is how it should all be, you know? Right. We're just open and like, oh, is that how you're doing it? Okay, cool. Right. Um, um, interesting. <laughs> yeah. What would really be cool is to get on. You know what? We should. Hmm. You're giving me ideas. I'm going to stop recording and we have to talk about something. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Bye, guys. <laughs>